So let's understand a concept called proportional sampling, which is a very, very important concept in, in probability and sampling in general. So we will see this concept of, prob of proportional sampling being used many, many times in multiple algorithms across machine learning and data science, right? So let, before we go into it, let's understand what is proportional sampling. Imagine you are given a matrix D. Let's just say this matrix is D. Let's assume it has five elements. Element 1, element 2, element 3, element 4, and element 5. Let's say 5 is equal to n. Okay. I'll, I'll refer to this as an array with n elements. Right. So let's call each of these values as d1, d2, d3, d4, and d5. Right. I have five values. Now, let's assume the values that I have in this array are 2.0, 6.0, I'm just taking a numerical example so that you'll understand it better, right? 1.2, 5.8, and let's say 20.0. Now, the task, the task of proportional sampling is that I want to, so my task is here, let me write it down clearly. My task is that I want to pick, I want to pick an element, I want to pick an element amongst these m amongst these amongst the n elements i want to pick an element amongst the n elements such that this is very important such that the probability of picking an element the probability of picking an element the probability of picking an element is proportional to is proportional to the value proportional to di's that's what it means so let me explain what that means intuitively it means amongst these five values i want to pick one value if i randomly pick a value imagine if i randomly if i if i randomly pick a value each of these values is equally probable if i just do a toss right and if i pick one of these five values at random each of these elements, the first element, second element, third element, fourth element, fifth element are equally probable. But I don't want to randomly pick things. I want to pick in such a way that the fifth element is much more likely to be picked up when I randomly pick up because the value in the fifth cell, which is 20, is significantly larger than others. Right? So I want to pick an element amongst these elements such that the probability of picking is proportional to the value, the di, the d5. Because d5 is significantly larger than rest of them, I want, when I pick a random value from these five values, this value should be more often picked up because it has a larger value here. Similarly, similarly, if I take a value here, this value, this 1.2 is smaller than everything else. So the probability of picking, so the probability of picking the third element, picking the third element, picking the third element must be extremely small. I've written ELT as a short form for element, right? Because the value here is 1.2, which is significantly lower than everything else. Now, how do we achieve that, right? This is clear. Our goal is to come up with a mechanism through which I can pick up my elements either element 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, I have to pick up these elements such that the probability of picking up is proportional to these values which are there. Now, how do we do it? Let's go step by step, right? My step 1, right? My step 1. My step 1 is, step 1a, let's write it as step 1a, okay? I'll compute a value called s, which is the sum of all the di's, i equals to 1 to n which in our case, we have since we have five di's, we will just sum up all the five di's. When I sum up all these five values, I will get a value of 35. I've already pre-computed this so that I don't have to waste time in this video, right? If you sum up these five values, 2, 6, 1.2, 5.8, and 20, you will get a sum of 35. This is step 1a. Step 1b is, okay, so this is basically compute the sum. Let me write it here. This is compute the sum. This is, this is step 1a. 
step 1b is right now i will take each di and compute di dash such that di dash is equal to di by s this is my step 1b right so what what does this mean it means my d1 dash is equal to take this element 2 divided by the sum which is 35 i'll get some value similarly d2 dash similarly d3 dash similarly d4 dash similarly d5 dash right basically what am i doing here i am basically normalizing i am basically normalizing these values normalizing these values using the sum so when i do this when i do this the values i'll get here are 0 0.0571 0 0.171428 i have pre-computed them right just so that it's easier so d3 dash is nothing but d3 divided by the sum which is 35 and so on and so forth right so i get these values i'll just write them down here 1657 and 0 0.5714 now if you notice it has a nice property right all these values lie between 0 to 1 and all these values will sum to 1 right if you sum up di dash sum of all di dashes will be 1 because sum of di dash is equal to sum of di by s and sum of all di's is equal to s so this will be equal to 1 very simple algebraic proof right so this is called normalizing the sum so i got my di dash now let's see step c okay so step a, 1a is compute the sum step 1b is normalizing the sum such that all these values lie between 0 and 1 but we are normalizing using the sum right we are not doing the the standard min max type of normalization right we are we are normalizing using the sum right so step c let's write step c step c is called computing the cumulative computing the cumulative normalized sum right since we already have normalized values let me define so let's write down here right our d1 dash our d2 dash our d3 dash our d4 dash and d5 dash okay let's write those values here 0 0.0571 0 0.171428 0 0.0343 0 0.1657 0 0.5714 these are our normalized values right now we'll compute the cumulative normalized sum values what do they mean here okay so let's call these cumulative normalized sums as di tilde so my d1 tilde is exactly equal to d1 dash which is 0 0.0571 my d2 tilde is equal to d1 tilde plus d2 dash which means i will take this value which is my d1 tilde i'll sum it up with d2 dash whatever value i get here which will be 0.228528 my d3 tilde will be equal to my d2 tilde the previous value plus my d3 dash okay so now i'll sum this value with this value what will i get here i'll get 0 0.262828 similarly d4 tilde and d5 tilde right my d4 tilde will be 0 0.428528 and my d5 tilde will be 1.00 now one thing you have to notice here is let me let me explain this if you are computing let's say d3 tilde the value that you have in d3 tilde is nothing but the sum of all the values you have from d1 up to d3 right the sum the sum of all of these values is equal to your d3 tilde that's why it's called the cumulative sum because you are combining or you're taking the cumulative values and summing them up because it's a sum of all the values it's a cumulative sum of the normalized values similarly if you take d4 tilde d4 tilde is nothing but the sum of all the values from d1 dash to d4 dash that's what your d4 tilde is your d5 tilde is one because we know that sum of all of these values is equal to one 
right so your di tildes your di tildes are called cumulative normalized values these are normalized using the sum right so in this step 1c we computed the cumulative normalized values now we will use these values to achieve our task let's not forget our task i'll also explain why these steps are necessary intuitively a while later so we have seen step 1a step 1b step 1c now let's go to step 2 right let's go to step 2 in step 2 right i will sample i will sample one value one value from a uniform random variable right with a range between 0 and 1 I'm going to sample one value. Let's call that value as R. So programmatically speaking, I can achieve this by saying R is equal to numpy dot random dot uniform. Uniform. I want my random variable, my uniform random variable. I want to sample one value from a range of 0 and 1. And I want one value. So this one, this says the range. This gives you the range from which you should sample. This tells the number of values because I want only one value, right? So your R will be a number between 0 and 1 such that it is uniformly sampled. Let's assume our R is 0 0.6. Let, let, right? This is how we sample one value, R, from a uniform random variable which lies between 0 and 1. Right? This is step 2. Now comes the step 3. This is, this is the interesting step. Now let's go to step 3. In step 3, we will use our cumulative normalized values, di dashes. And we will say that, now, now, now here is where this, the proportional sampling will happen. This is where the proportional sampling will actually happen. We will say if your r is less than equal to d1 tilde, then return 1 as the as the proportional sample else if r is less than equal to d2 return 2 else if r is less than equal to d3 tilde sorry not d2 d3 tilde then return 3 and so on and so forth so what are we literally doing here in this logic we are saying if our r look at this our r here is 0.6 what are our d tilde di tildes here is r less than equal to uh, is r less than equal to d1 tilde no is r less than equal to d2 tilde no is r less than equal to d3 no is r less than equal to d4 tilde no is r less than equal to d5 tilde yes so we will return 5 here that's what this logic says this logic says that's what that's what this whole logic says literally now remember now you might wonder why why does it achieve our task all this step one step two step three is very nice very simple but why does it achieve our task let me try to argue that for you right now because we are sampling a uniform random variable this r will lie between zero and one Right? Its probability of lying between any value between 0 and 1 is the same. Right? Right? Number 1. Number 2. Now, let's assume, let's assume, let's assume its value lies at, okay, let me, let me draw it here. I think that's better. Let's say, take D1 tilde, D2 tilde, D3 tilde, D4 tilde and D5 tilde. Let's assume the R value, let's assume the R value lies between these two. Let's assume R lies between these two. Right? Now, now, this gap, D3 tilde and D4 tilde, the gap is nothing but D4 dash. That's how we defined, right? If you look at this, what is D4 dash? It is D3 tilde plus D4 dash. Right? So, this gap, so the probability, the probability of R lying between these two between any two values between d3 d4 or d4 d5 i'm just taking d3 d4 as an example 
so the probability okay the probability of r lying between let's say d3 tilde and d4 tilde is equal to d4 dash right because r will lie r is a uniform random variable let's not forget that because it's a uniform random variable its probability of having any of these numbers is the same right now your r lying between these two values is proportional to the gap that exists between these two numbers right and that gap is nothing but d4 dash so the probability of r lying between okay let's look at this the probability of picking up probability of picking up 4 is equal to probability of r lying between d3 tilde and d4 tilde that's our logic right that's a riffel's condition here which is equal to d4 dash right and d4 dash is proportional to d4 because d4 dash is nothing but d4 by some constant sum which means look look at this flow of logic the probability of picking up 4 right is equal to the probability of r lying between d3 tilde and d4 tilde which is nothing but which is equivalent to right the the the, the probability of r lying between these two this this gap here is proportional to d4 dash it's exactly this gap this gap is exactly equivalent to d4 dash and this d4 dash is proportional to d4 because there is a constant value that you are dividing each of the di's to get di dash hence the probability of picking up 4 is proportional to the d4 value that you have similarly i can argue for d3 d2 d1 d5 everything Right? This is the intuitive flow of logic on why this method, this step-by-step, -step, this three-step method will achieve proportional sampling. And please mind it, we will encounter proportional sampling many, many times in the course. Right? So this is a very, very simple concept, but a very powerful concept in sampling. Because this is so useful at so many places in machine learning and data science that you will not believe it. It's a very, very core fundamental algorithm.